<clears throat> oh. Hi everyone. <laughs> Today we're going to be trying something a little different. Um, I normally try to be very positive on this channel and I'm not going to be outright negative, but I am going to make a sort of follow-up video to my trans vaccinated video because there was a lot of good reception to it and I wanted to talk about COVID and specifically anti-vax nonsense again. If you don't like it, please click away. I'm not trying to dim your shine. I'm just trying to combat misinformation. I do not, there are people in my family who are currently spread, spreading misinformation and I do not want anyone to be harmed. And if you disagree, that's whatever, right? This video is clearly not gonna get through to you because I'm not gonna fix the problem. But anyway, we're gonna be going through r slash Herb and Kane award and we're gonna be talking about what happens to a lot of the people who proudly exclaim how stupid they think COVID is and then publicly die from it. And you might ask, Lyra, this doesn't seem very positive. Well, it is because a lot of the people around me specifically have been acting like this pandemic is over. But with Omicron, yes, a lot of the people I know who got COVID recently are, are fine now, but some of them are dealing with side effects. So let's all just Let's all just remember for a moment that the pandemic is still happening and let's talk about the people who killed themselves with their own stupidity. So the top ever post on this subreddit with 66,000 upvotes defining Herman Cain Award is for COVID idiots. Screenshot their photos and posts, turning them into memes on one Reddit page, even giving out awards to those who refused the vaccine and then died. So, you're asking, well, what, what's here to celebrate? Well, that was acknowledged on Fox News. That's actually a really big deal because I'm just gonna say it. Most people aren't going to acknowledge, at least most people who are part of the denial crowd, they're not going to acknowledge the people who basically publicly fall on their face and die because of their, their hubris. A COVID patient coded and passed. This is how his family thanked us for doing everything possible for trying to keep his unvaccinated butt alive. On the paperwork, his family filled out, fuck you, you killed him, doc shit nurses. Gratitude. Gratitude. See, a lot of these people get, I, I know a lot of people in healthcare who are getting negativity directed at them when people come in for symptoms of COVID and then they're like, well, I don't have COVID. Don't tell me I have COVID, but they're coming because they feel sick. And then they get mad at the people who are trying to help them just because they don't want to accept that they're sick. Let's keep going. I'm being discriminated against. I know exactly how you feel. I had to wear a mask outside. Okay, this one's pretty bad. So for those of you who don't know, Crystal Knot, it was a day of Nazi terror where windows were smashed, Jewish shopkeepers were essentially threatened. And this is a, a Karen outside of a smashed window with a Star of David on the person who's sweeping up the glass saying, I know exactly how you feel. I had to wear a mask at Home Depot once. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. And I'm, I just gotta say, being anti-vax is one thing because there's a lot of anti, there's a lot of misinformation and distrust with medicine that I understand. But being anti-mask is stupid. Being anti-mask is cruel and being pro-death. Yeah, not so pro-life, are ya? Don't think COVID is real, have fun dying in the parking lot. I'm an ICU doctor and I run my own unit. Yesterday, I had a gentleman come in with all the classic symptoms, cough, fever, shortness of breath, and of course, profound hypoxia. His CXR showed the classic diffuse bilateral infiltrate we've all come to immediately recognize as COVID. I told him he likely has COVID and we're waiting for the PCR results to come back. But it's time to start with therapy. Well, he did not like that. He immediately went, COVID isn't real and you're trying to kill me. Of course he wasn't vaccinated. He wanted to leave the hospital right away. Considering he could barely get a sentence out without needing to catch his breath, I convinced him to at least spend the night. Fast forward to this morning. Lo and behold, he's COVID positive. Well, he absolutely flipped his shit, accused us of all sorts of things. This is what I don't get. I do not get. I think that people who do this should immediately be thrown out and be refused healthcare because the healthcare system is a joke. A lot of places are beyond capacity. And if you are anti-vax and fighting your nurses, you do not deserve their care. And you do not deserve one of these ER rooms over somebody who isn't doing that. Just saying. I know that sounds cruel, but I'm just saying. He immediately asked to leave the hospital again at this point. Also, he went to the hospital for a reason. And then he's like, oh, you're trying to kill me? But like, you went to the hospital because you feel sick, dude. So stupid. 
At this point, he was on 100% oxygen and high-flow nasal cannula, essentially one step away from being intubated, which he was adamantly against. He kept pulling his oxygen off, and I kept watching his aster oxygen saturation dip into the high 70s. I went into the room to talk to him. He understood he was sick. He understood his oxygen levels were low. He understood that he needed treatment. He understood leaving before we had the chance to treat him would increase his chances of dying. At every step, he demonstrated capacity to make medical decisions. Besides his baseline delusion about the reality of COVID, he was totally cogent and coherent. My hands were tied. It's a hospital, not a prison, and I let him sign himself out. I called the Department of Health to let him know. He got his clothes and belongings and huffed his way out of the hospital. Apparently, he made it halfway to the road when he collapsed. A code was called overhead, and I figured it must have been the same guy. I went down to the ER to confirm my suspicion and saw the ER doc getting ready to intubate. I called out and told him the story that this guy doesn't want intubation or any medical treatment. So, he died. One fewer patient in my full unit. Don't be this guy. Don't fight the people trying to save your life. And if you don't believe COVID is real, I can't, I can't fight that battle for you, you know? I can't fight all this misinformation on my own. I can only do my, I can only do what I can. Heard from a nurse. None of the vaccine skeptics seem to be treatment skeptics. Every single one of my ex, <laughs> every single one of my unvaccinated COVID patients blindly accepts being pumped full of various drugs when their own life is tangibly on the line. Well, guess what, Karen? Your life is tangibly on the line if you don't get vaccinated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not. And I can't. I am the type of person who grew really depressed seeing all this death around me, seeing all these people getting COVID and dying. But I cannot afford to empathize with everyone because it's, if, if these people are dying, it's their own fault. This is a picture of what happens when you are being rotated. And if you don't think COVID is real, what the hell is this picture, lady? What is it? This post is saying, I got vaccinated today after scrolling through this sub for a few days. I wish more people who refuse to vaccinate would just see these stories. I don't want to die or spread any illness that will take the lives of others. That is why I'm doing this. I just want one person, one person to see these real people and their real stories and think, hmm, hmm, maybe just, maybe just think about it. Journalist states the obvious. COVID is killing Trump supporters by the hundreds each day. From New York Times, journalist Donald G. McNeil Jr. wrote an article on Medium that stated what everyone with an ounce of intelligence knows but don't dare put in print. Not only is Trump losing hundreds of voters each day to COVID, but they are already surpassing the margins the GOP can hope to attain in the swing states. This hasn't been printed because it's ghoulish to post the political ramifications of a human life. To which I reply that Democrats aren't the ones killing these people. Their own right-wing disinformation machine is. Hell, we are trying to save them despite the political ramifications. Interesting, right? There is no political incentive for me to try to save conservatives. But I'm doing it. Trumpists don't believe in wearing masks, hate social distancing, and are so anti-vax that they won't even listen to Trump as he tries to tout the vaccines. GOP leaders are also undermining public health directives aimed at protecting people. Trump did not... Trump did have a change of heart about promoting the vaccines, only because someone impressed upon him that the deaths are his voters. Hmm. As soon as it affects me, I care. He really needs as many possible in 2024, but it's too late and getting worse. Multiple studies from the AP, CDC, and even Texas Health Services have shown that the, de the deaths are almost entirely among the unvaccinated, and most of those identify as Republican. The profile of a typical COVID victim is now an older vaccinated, an older unvaccinated person who is obese and lives in a rural area. In other words, the same profile as a Trumper. This is already having a major political impact. As of this week, about 1,800 Americans a day are dying of COVID. The CDC expects that number to rise above 2,600. Virtually all are adults. If 95% were unvaccinated, and we assume that 75% of those were Trump supporters, that's 1,300 to 1,900 of his voters being subtracted from rolls every single day. Donald Trump lost Arizona by a mere 10,000 votes. He lost Georgia by 12,000. He lost Wisconsin by 21,000. He lost Nevada by 33,000. Right now, about 60 Arizonans, 36 Georgians, 34 Wisconsinites, and 14 Nevadans are dying of COVID each day. 75% of 95% of that would be minus two, 103 Trump voters per day, just in those four swing states week after week. That adds up. So if you're wondering why Trump flip-flopped on the vaccine, people, that's why, and that's why I'm not going to give up on you. That's why I'm not going to give up on you crazy people.
And I'm allowed to say crazy because I'm crazy too, and that's what people call me. And it at this point is crazy. If even Trump is telling you to get vaccinated, to still be anti-vax, really, lady? You don't even have a personality beyond what church you joined this week. This post, COVID idiots in a nutshell. This just in, CEO of Seatbelt says that they don't prevent car crashes, but will probably keep you from launching through the windshield to your untimely demise. Idiots. So you're saying they don't work. CEO of seatbelts. Also, we're going to need you to wear a shoulder strap. The lap one is okay, but studies show this is safer. Idiots again. Where will it end? Why do they keep changing the rules? And this is the logic of the vaccine. It's like, oh, so you need another booster shot? It's like, yeah, lady. Okay. What people don't realize is that this, like, people are like, oh, I'll just go on antibiotics. I'll just go on medicine. Whatever. We are going to see antibiotics antibiotic resistant diseases are already out there. They are going to continue to grow because of idiotic idiocy like this. Herman Cain, masks will not be mandatory for the event, which will be attended by President Trump. People are fed up. Rip Herman Cain. There once was a dad from PA. To face masks, he always said nay. If I get some germ, I'll take horse deworm. His funeral scheduled today. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know that's hateful, but that is so good. And these people are more willing to take horse dewormer than they are to take a vaccine because Trump told them to. But then Trump told them to take a vaccine and now they won't do it. <laughs> oh God. This is why millennials are also depressed by the way, because these are the people we have to deal with. I was on the fence about the vaccine until I found this sub, got my second shot today. You guys probably saved my life. That was nine hours ago. Amazing. Amazing, and that's why I'm doing it. I know I'm not gonna save that many people, but I think I could save at least one person. Anti-vaxxers in 2001. The flu kills more people every year. God! In honor of all the anti-vax and anti-mask lions out there, life is about perspective. You might think you're a lion, but to some people you're a dick. <laughs> Hillary Clinton adopts alien baby. Kids, this is a tabloid from 1993. Back then, fake news was called tabloids and anyone who believed them were called idiots. Accentuate the positive. Any good news, Doc? He doesn't have worms. Thank you, Ivermectin. Freedom. How you can reject modern medicine and die like a medieval peasant. How anti-vaxxers sleep after doing their own research. Well, I've tested positive for COVID. Boys went to stay with their grandma so they wouldn't get sick. But last night, blank tested positive so he came home with mom. Now today, our blank isn't feeling well and has a fever and sleeping a lot, so he's on his way too. Which grandma? Question mark. Question mark. Wait. So she touched. So she tested positive for COVID and then rushed her kids to her grandma's place. Oh, that's that's like speed running COVID. <laughs> If giving free shots for the health of the nation, why aren't giving away free insulin and chemo? Yeah, why aren't we? That's a really good question, lady. It's because healthcare is run for profit. Red Hat gives you wings. I'm so tired of seeing these constant headlines saying anti-vaxxer dies of COVID. Why don't they start writing stories every time a fully vaxxed and boosted person dies of COVID? Because it doesn't fit the liberals' political agenda. Oh, they're so close. There's so many double triple backs people who've gotten COVID, but interestingly enough, they didn't die. You know what my dad said after he got COVID? I'm so glad it waited until I had three shots before it got me because it was mild and he is fine now. And he doesn't have symptoms that are staying with him. Shocking. This storm is a hoax. Shovels don't work. <laughs> Enjoy digging out sheep. God damn it. I like to wear a mask in the car to trigger all the snowflakes. <laughs> Anti-vaxxer before COVID. You scared sheeple. Don't push your pose then onto me. I will take my chances. Anti-vaxxer after COVID. Oh no, I can't breathe. I need to go to the hospital. This virus is real. Please donate to my GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, because it's also, you get like bankrupted if you get COVID. So yeah, I understand why people don't want to believe in the pandemic. Shockingly, I actually don't want to believe in the pandemic either. When it first came out, I, I had like a terror dream. And like when I was a kid, I was deathly afraid of like 
disease. I was deathly afraid of like pandemics. Ebola was scary to me. So if I was a child during COVID, this would have been my worst nightmare come true. And it kind of is. The only difference is that it's less lethal than I imagined, but more contagious. And there's just way more people that deny it exists than I, than I thought there would be. I didn't think that people would deny it, but exist. Just saying. Who are we? Anti-vaxxers. What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it? <laughs> oh, I sh I'm going to hell for laughing. Comply <laughs> chain. Fox News. Emergency care. Mortuary. It took click it or ticket to get people to wear a seatbelt. I wonder if mask it or casket might work. That's a good question. Wait, the hospital is over there. Why are you bringing me here? The hospital is for the vaccinated, not to worry. The staff here are Facebook and Twitter mes medical experts that you already know and trust. <laughs> if I die, I die, Meatloaf reportedly, an anti-vaxxer before his death. The late singer was reportedly anti-vaccine mandate and anti-mask and said he did not want to be controlled before his COVID-related death. Do you think it was a mistake to remove half of Eddie's brain? <laughs> Okay, that tickled me. Vaccine taken by someone who didn't get COVID. The medications taken by an unvaccinated ho hospitalized patient. The anti-vaccine movement supports big pharma. But they would just say, no, disagree. When you're reading the local obituaries and it's just guys in camo hats and sunglasses, it's not COVID, it's freedom pneumonia. Virus is not real. Refuse to wear a mask or get vaccinated. Virus is real, vaccine is not. Load up on horse dewormer and urine cocktails. Regret not vaccinating. Ask for thoughts and prayers while in ICU. Wait, waiting to be intubated. Post regrets about not getting vaccinated. Rally the Facebook prayers warriors. Funeral announcement posted to Facebook. Family opens a GoFundMe page. And some of these people get like 60,000. 60,000 for denying COVID, not being ready for COVID, dying of COVID, and then being like, I should have been ready for COVID. Tell the libs I owned them. Now that's just sad. I mean, all of this is. So how long until GoFundMe is our nation's leading healthcare provider? Try it now. I don't like being in a pandemic with y'all. It's like being on silent lunch, but we keep getting days added on because y'all won't shut up. <laughs> Do not get the vaccine. It has mice DNA, AIDS, and nanotechnology in it. See what is in the vaccine on bitchutsdopeters.com, truenews.com, Dr. Frank, Dr. Andreas Nowak, Father Alexis Bunglo, Father Alexis Bungnolo, Robert Malone, that's where they get the rash, AIDS virus, also Book of Revelation. The Pfizer has alien DNA, eye, and three legs. Watch Dr. Frank like the move, the thing. Christians are calling the vaccine the mark of the beast. Their box is on the L trick post beige gray connected to 5G and 5G towers inside the box says Vokid 19 on the corner. If you've gotten vaccinated with a black light, you can see your veins glowing with a smartphone or iPhone your shot for your OR code to hook up the internet. You'll get your number. Each vaccine you get a number and they can track you. There's a video, casino in Las Vegas, Nevada on a we or pillar an A and three legs on it like Dr. Frank described. They have a hive mind by a St. Louis U.S. District Judge Matthew Schlepp says these states will allow you not to take the vaccine. Arkansas, Alaska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, New Hampshire, North Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming. Dr. Andre Nowak, graphene oxides like a race through blades in the vaccine. Bit Chute Kenadachi, 11 28 2021. Head of the Chemnitz Clinic committed suicide right. They killed him. Found this at McDonald's. Well, that is clearly right. When it comes to COVID, just trust the science. God will save me. To help prevent COVID, wear a mask. God will save me. We have a cure for COVID. Here's a vaccine. God will save me. God, why didn't you save me? What do you mean? I gave you science, masks, and a vaccine. Vaccine passport required for entry. <laughs> oh my God. If you're wondering why Trump is telling his voters now to get vaccinated, look at this. Demographics wise, it's no wonder they're changing their tune.
A nurse relates how traumatic it is to take care of even a compliant unvaccinated COVID patient. I'm not sure if I can convey in words what it feels like to take care of a dead man walking. Just another day in the ICU, he was around 70 years old, a pretty active guy, one of those relatively stubborn and fiercely independent people who didn't typically go to the doctor unless their arm had been ripped off. He had come to the hospital a couple of days ago with a cough, fever, and a little troubled breathing. Unsurprisingly, he had COVID-19. Turns out his saturation percentage of his arterial capillary oxygen was around 60% when he hit the doors of the emergency department. Off onto a rabbit trail physiology lesson for a minute. In our blood, there is a protein called hemoglobin. Each single hemoglobin protein is capable of carrying four oxygen molecules at a time. If they are carrying four, then they are saturated with oxygen. The hemoglobin molecules pick up the body's oxygen molecules in the lungs, carry them to the body's tissues, drop them off, and then return back to the lungs to grab more oxygen. The body tissues needs its oxygen in order to stay alive. The oxygen saturation number, or SpO2, measures what percent of the hemoglobin molecules that are flowing past the sensor are saturated with four molecules of oxygen. Normal SpO2 is 94 to 99%. If saturation is less than that, some of the tissues cannot get enough oxygen to stay alive and are forced to start essentially eating themselves. One of the classic signs of significant COVID-19 illness is having SpO2 levels that are alarm that are alarmingly low with only moderate symptoms back to the patient let's call him bob when i walked on the floor of icu to get report that morning bob had been transferred there a few hours before they couldn't keep his spo2 above 88 percent on the regular nursing floor in spite of increasing his oxygen supply dramatically the night shift nurse described how bob was taking off his oxygen to scratch his nose and taking off his spo2 sensor because it was irritating his finger she kept reminding him to put his high flow nasal cannula back in his nose and had to replace the oxygen sensor several times. She finally had a frank confrontational conversation with him. Do you want to die tonight? No, of course not. Stop removing your oxygen. Stop removing your oxygen sensor. If you take those off and fall asleep and I can't see what's going on, I'm going to walk into this room and find you dead tonight. You need both of them. You have to stop it. This seemed to finally get through to him and when I took over his care, he was a rather subdued and cooperative patient. Scared straight might be one way to describe it. I introduced myself to him and asked how he was doing. I know, I'm sick, but I feel fine, he insisted. I don't really feel that bad. I just get a little winded when I try to do too much. I'm going to be fine. I could see the frustration in Bob's eyes. Why was he stuck in the hospital when he felt relatively okay? Why did he have to come to the ICU and get bothered more often? Why did he have to have all this stuff connected to him? He was used to being totally independent and going about his morning routine, and he didn't quite believe that all of this fuss was necessary. I took a couple of minutes to try to describe to him what was happening to him. Regular air floating around us right now is 21% oxygen. We breathe in and out, and it normally has no problem getting down to our fingertips where the oxygen sensor is measuring how much oxygen is in your blood. That measurement is usually 90 to 99%. The reason that you are in the ICU is that we are pumping air is that 100% oxygen into your nose at 60 liters a minute. That maximum rate is we can use a high flow nasal cannula. Even with that extraordinary amount of oxygen flowing into your lungs, your sensor is only reading 88%. If you hold still and don't do anything. The problem is between your nose and that oxygen sensor and that problem is your lungs. When your body is infected with other viruses, your immune system has already seen similar viruses. So once it figures out that you are infected, it can grab the virus pretty quick and attack it. With COVID-19, your body has never seen anything like it before. So it was able to go deep into your lungs and hijack your cells, turning each cell into a virus producing factory and killing it. But since your immune system has never seen it before, it takes a bit longer for it to recognize that there's an infection. And then it takes your immune system a while to figure out how to grab a hold of all the virus floating around and stop it from killing more cells. The question is if your immune system finally figures out how to do this, how much damage has already been done. By the time you came to the hospital, there was already enough viral damage in your lungs that your SpO2 was around 60%. So that means there was already enough dead lungs that the oxygen couldn't get from the air into your blood. We are giving you all the stuff we can to help encourage your immune system, but ultimately we don't know how this is gonna turn out. Even once the virus is stopped, your body is now dealing with lungs that have a lot of dead cells in them. So it may take weeks before your lungs start recovering, even if they can. Bob was really listening. I could see a flicker of recognition in his eyes, a brief glimpse at his own mortality. God, I wish I had gotten vaccinated, he said, shaking his head. This was replaced quickly by stubborn determination, and he asked for help getting set up to eat breakfast. I moved his oxygen supply and monitor cables around so he could stand and walk to the chair. He seemed purposeful and resilient, relishing the fact that he required only help with the equipment. His SpO2 dropped to 83% when walking, but it came back up within a few minutes of coached breathing, and he started eating. 
I checked on Bob throughout the morning. His SpO2 hovered at 86 to 89%, barely acceptable. A little while after his breakfast was done, he needed to use the toilet. After this, he sat back down in the chair. The exertion of this simple morning routine proved to be more than he could handle. His SpO2 fell to 85% and wouldn't come up any higher, even with coach breathing. We added another oxygen mask at its maximum flow of 100% oxygen at 15 liters per minute on top of his high flow nasal cannula that was already at maximum flow. This got us back up to an SpO2 of 88%. Bob, if your SpO2 drops down in the danger zone and doesn't come up, would you be okay with us sedating you and putting a breathing tube into your lungs so that we can force more oxygen into your blood with a ventilator? Or do you not want that? Well, I really don't want that, no, but if that's what we have to do, I'm okay with it. Right, we'll keep doing everything we can to keep you stable and safe without doing that. I helped Bob get back into bed so he could rest. He remained strong and relatively independent. I still, and still didn't really feel that sick, just a little bit winded from walking. His SpO2 hovered at 88 to 90 percent with the additional oxygen mask quasi-stable for the moment. Why am I reading this whole thing? It might seem like a needless, gruesome story if you can see where this is going. Well, it's because most people do not realize that this could be you. And if you aren't vaccinated by now, at this point it's really hard for me to feel sim sympathy for you if you are vaccinated by if you are not vaccinated by choice don't get me wrong i know there are people who cannot be vaccinated for immune system reasons one of my one of my family members who whom i love so much my aunt nancy she cannot be vaccinated because she is disabled and has really bad immune system and you know what i care enough about her to not want her to die is that so crazy so i'm going to do whatever i can to spread the information out there that maybe might change someone's mind and maybe might get somebody vaccinated and if you don't want to listen to this you don't have to bob put on his call light an hour or so later when i looked into the window he excitedly waved me into his room i put on I put the plastic gown, gloves, N6, N95 mask and goggles on again and entered his room. Look look at this, Bob announced proudly, waving his incentive spirometer in my general direction. An incentive spirometer is a device that measures how big of a breath you can take. We, use, we encourage patients with lung infections to use it because it helps inflate their lungs all the way and helps the most oxygen get into their blood. I got it all the way up to 101 using this. I was a little confused what he meant, so I asked him to show me. Bob began taking really deep breaths using the incentive spirometer and was able to hit the maximum inhalation measurement of 2,500 milliliters of air over and over again. I watched his SpO2 on the monitor drop from 88% to 85% to 80% 80 to 75% as he took five, six of these breaths. He turned and looked triumphantly at me, his eyes sparkling a bit with hope. See, it's all the way up to 99%. I cocked my head and looked at the monitor and then realized the confusion. Oh, that's your heart rate. Your oxygen is 78%. When you are using the incentive spirometer, you are breathing through your mouth instead of your nose where the nasal, nasal canola is. So it drops pretty quickly, which is why your heart rate goes up. Does that make sense? The hope faded from his eyes and was replaced with a flicker of terror, a dark haunting shadow of dread combined with fear. It didn't matter how hard he tried. It didn't matter how deeply or rapidly he breathed. It didn't matter how much oxygen we shoved into his nose. It didn't matter how badly he wanted to get better. The oxygen was simply not getting from his lungs into his bloodstream. The viral army was still winning this battle. Stoic resilience followed the terror and Bob nodded to me that he understood and put the mask back in place over the nasal cannula. This is terrifying because now it's too late for him to change his mind. He wanted the vaccine once he realized the consequences, but he didn't believe the consequences until they were happening to him. And this will not happen to anyone. This will happen to some people. This will not happen to everyone. It hasn't happened to me yet. It could happen to me. I have been triple vaccinated. I could die of COVID. I don't think I will. I'm taking care of myself, but I hope that other people use the information at their fingertips. I have a feeling they won't, but I hope they use the information at their fingertips to protect themselves and other people. I barely picked at his lunch. He was watching the monitor like a hawk now and would hold extra oxygen mask up to his face between every bite. Eating food was now a secondary priority to him. He just wanted to keep his oxygen levels up. He looked discouraged, so I offered to pray with him that it if that would be helpful. He gratefully accepted. I updated his son by phone. He was the same age as me. I told him the same thing. I tell him, I tell all of the families in this situation. I told him that we have 
to take it a day at a time that we were now riding the COVID train and we weren't sure where it was going to end up, that sometimes the lungs can't recover. Sometimes it takes weeks for the lungs to recover and sometimes people get better surprisingly quickly. That, with COVID-19, I've seen 90-year-old ladies leave the hospital on just a little bit of oxygen. I've seen 30-year-old men with no medical history never make it out of the ICU. That each day is precious, that we should grab a hold of that day and live it. That if his dad got any worse, the next step was a ventilator and he should come visit if he, should, if he could. Just be with him as he rides the train. This is actually one of the things that has inspired me to live my life differently because I realize how precious life is in a way that I didn't before. And my generation... My generation is lucky enough to not have a war that I was drafted into, you know? And But I do kind of feel like there is a war on COVID and there is an ongoing war on misinformation. And I am not gonna only create stuff about it. I actually realize it's a major bummer, but I'm gonna do what I can. I finished my shift that afternoon and gave report to the next nurse. Just another COVID-19 report. They are also similar. Bob is here with COVID-19 pneumonia. He was 60% SpO2 in the ER and was admitted two days ago to tele telemetry on high flow nasal cannula. He was transferred to ICU last night due to increasing oxygen demand. He is alert and oriented. Lungs are clear but diminished. <sighs> he is maxed out on oxygen, dry hacking cough, up with assistance and equipment. Everything else is relatively normal. He didn't understand how serious this was until this morning, but I think he's starting to get it. I walked back to the locker room and shower before changing clothes and walked out to my car. The little flicker of terror in Bob's eyes haunted me for a bit. For a brief second, he knew what we already knew. Bob was a dead man. Maybe, just maybe, he could be the rare miracle that survives this level of illness, but that was really unlikely. What was actually going to happen is that Bob would end up intubated and on the ventilator. He would require maximum ventilator support, eventually requiring chemical, paral chemical paralyzation to maximize lung compliance because even that wouldn't work. Bob would need to be pronated on his stomach for 16 hours a day, requiring either rotoprone bed that looks like a medieval torture device or a team of six nurses and two respiratory therapists to flip him twice a day. Eventually, after a week of this, his family would realize that this was futile and ask that we stop. The lung damage was done. The train was already down the tracks. He was a dead man walking, and for half a second, he knew it too. I am so sorry, but this is the kind of thing that people who aren't vaccinated and going to these COVID parties to get immunized... They need to know that this could be them, especially if you have a history of illness. Maybe you haven't been exercising lately. Throughout the pandemic, I stopped exercising until I recently rediscovered yoga and my health was starting to decline. I was dealing with chronic pain. If I had gotten COVID before I got vaccinated, I could have been one of these people. But when you get vaccinated, it is reportedly less severe. My whole family got COVID this last weekend and they all had it mild because they're all boosted. And I just, I really don't want to see people have to do this. This is so sad. My dear, dear cousins are in the healthcare industry right now, and I have a lot of family members in healthcare. And one of my one of my cousins is working as, as an ER nurse, and she just got COVID, even though she's boosted. It's been pretty severe, and she is honestly, I I haven't been able to talk to her about it, but I am no I have no doubt she's traumatized by the stuff she's seen, by the stuff she has to do, and the fact that she's risking her life every day and did risk her life and got COVID despite being boosted. And it's all for people who aren't as compliant as this guy. This is actually a story of a guy changing his mind and being like, man, I wish I had gotten vaccinated. But some people say to their healthcare workers, I wish you would die, I, you're, you're, you're killing me. And these people are trying to save them. And that is traumatizing. People are leaving the nursing field at alarming, at alarming rates right now. And I, if you are in healthcare and if you are on the front lines and if you have to see this, my heart goes out to you. I see you, I respect you in a way that I could never do this. I really don't think I could. I visited Bob two days later. He was now on continuous AVAPs, which is a pressurized mask strapped to the face to provide maximum lug inflation and oxygen exchange without intubation. Even on that, his SpO2 hovered around 87%. I could see his dry parched lips behind the clear mask, and Bob asked if he could have some water in a muffled voice. I knew that at this stage of the game, removing that pressure mask even for 30 seconds might take 30 minutes of recovery. So I told him that I would have to ask his nurse for the day. I told him to stay strong and take it a day at a time, an hour at a time. I wished him well and fist bumped him before I left to sit there and wait. Nothing but nothing to do but wait. And this, this person is doing everything they can. 
And that must be horrifying. That must be horrifying for everyone. I ripped off my plastic gown and tossed it in the trash as I walked out the room. I kind of slam dunked it into the wastebasket in a frustrated despair. Yep, he was a dead man. This train was going to stop at the morgue. I checked on Bob two days later, but I didn't talk to him. I actually couldn't because he was sedated and on the ventilator. I wanted to talk to the son again to tell him how much I was sorry that this had happened, to tell him that his pain and grief was normal, and to tell him to prepare to say goodbye. But I wasn't involved in the situation anymore, so I didn't want to cause any unnecessary communication issues. A couple of days later, I saw the rotoprone bed in the, the room as his limp, comatose body was being flipped twice a day to recruit every single scrap of his lungs possible in order to keep him alive. I winced as I pictured the pressure ulcers that were probably forming on his face in spite of all the precautions that we take, just a matter of time before the train reached the, its destination. A couple of days later, he was gone. I saw the rotoprone bed outside the ICU, cleaned and ready for the next patient, ready to take the next one on a ride. I live for the little moments. Yes, I want them all to recover and walk out of the hospital, but I try to connect with their humanity, to let them know that they matter, that their life is precious and meaningful, that every moment of waking, breathing, sentient awareness is a miraculous gift from God. Those little moments when I make eye contact with them and mutual love, respect somehow gets transmitted between us, fill me with purpose and energy. But the moments when I see the dark fear in their eyes, when they experience the flash of hopeless terror, when they know deep down that they're a dead man walking, and I know that I can't fix it, and that it was largely preventable, it hurts at the soul level. This nurse, I don't know if it was this Reddit user, Paola Biatch, but this nurse is pouring her soul and, or, or his soul, I actually don't know, but, or their soul, normalize all genders. But I just really, really, to everyone I love who isn't vaccinated, you know who you are, and I know you're not watching this, but to my unvaccinated stepmom, whom I love, this could be you, and I don't want it to be you, and I'm the only one who's still trying. Everyone else has given up on you. Everyone else. Everyone else just thinks, you know what, it's too much misinformation to fight, but I'm still fighting for you. And I am going to stop it there because I do not want to dwell on this anymore. I think I've proven my point. To those of you who agree with me already, I'm sure you didn't really want to watch this whole video. Some of it's funny and some of it is gruesome and sad. And all of it is gruesome and sad, to be honest, but I'm using humor to cope. And to those of you who I love who aren't vaccinated, I am not giving up on you. And I hope that you don't give up on you. If you like this video, if you want me to keep making videos like this, let me know. Like, comment, share. Please comment. I don't get any comments other than people being like, show us your dick, and I don't want those comments. I'd also really like you to leave comments below if you have anything you want me to do instead. I don't want to just do stuff like this, but I wanted to do my part to spread some kind of education out there because the truth is, is that COVID's not going anywhere. So we just need to be prepared and we do need to adjust to a new world. Pandemics are always something that are going to exist. They've existed throughout human history and this People don't realize that the common cold is a pandemic. It's a pandemic that we just don't have a cure for and it's not deadly, so it's fine. And that might be what COVID becomes one day. You know, the trend is actually becoming more transmittable, less deadly. The problem is, it's that idiots see that and then they're like, well, it won't be deadly. Maybe not to you, but yes, it is deadly. And if you don't believe that people are dying, you're delusional, Mary. So I'm gonna leave it there, stay kind, be well, be healthy, get boosted, get vaxxed, go to CVS, it's really easy, and happy 2022.